Hi there, this is Paul Thompson from Spitfire Audio. I'm very excited today to be able to show you the Union Chapel Organ Library. This is the Great Union Chapel in London. Um, a miracle that it's still standing. It's been scheduled for demolition on occasions and is now supported by a very active charity. Um, it has an amazing music scene, live music scene, uh, classical music and um, gigs. Everyone from Björk to Suzanne Vega, Penguin Cafe Orchestra, Ray Davis, Amy Winehouse, Elton John, everybody has played there. It's, it's an incredible venue. The organ is an amazing instrument. It um, was built by Father Henry Willis in 1877, one of the greatest organ makers of all time, specifically to match the size and acoustic of the building. It's one of the finest organs in the world. Um, Willis also built the organs for the Royal Albert Hall and St Paul's Cathedral, amongst other instruments. So um, a really, a really fabulous instrument. It's recently been restored. So we're very excited to be working with the Union Chapel on capturing the sound of the organ for posterity. Um, and to also kind of further the help their work uh, over there. It's a great charity um, and so definitely worth a visit if you're in London. So I'm going to just jump straight in. I'm going to show you a few different stops and I'm going to show you um, a few different mic positions and then I'll talk a little bit more about the organ and about kind of um, different registrations you can use. So just how uh, I've got it set up at the moment, I've got all of the manuals in there and the pedal board and just going to play a couple of chords. <laughs> I'm just going to show you very quickly how um, the organ sounds using the different mics. So let's start off by the closest perspective. So you can hear we've got the pedal board in there. And you can hear that you've got a, a very, very tight um, perspective against the actual case of the organ there. We've got our kind of standard stereo stage mic type setup. This is almost kind of like you might imagine a tree but it's more of a it's more of a kind of crossed stage pair. And then we've got our usual ambience and outriggers. Here are the ambience. So you can hear a really uh, beautiful developed sound there as it kind of moves around the something which is always important for an organist when you're selecting your registrations for performance live is to ensure that um, the organ often sounds quite unbalanced from where you're actually sat um, because you're closer to some some pipes and further away from others so it's always about making sure that when by the time the sound reaches the center of the room whether it's a church whether it's um, you know a chapel or a concert hall that the sound that the audience hears is balanced. Here are the wider outriggers. Um, so you can hear there, you've got a lot of different tone colors to, to go with. Um, I'm gonna set up, um, we'll look at the individual, the individual manuals. So let's take a look at the choir first. So on this organ, there are three different manuals or the keyboards, and then you've got the pedal board. And we've um, curated a selection of the most varied and useful stops from, from the organ into this package. Um, so I'm gonna take you through them one by one. Now you'll notice that you can't, when you've got one stop selected or lit or pulled out, however you want to imagine it, um, you can't turn that off. So you also have, you always have to have one stop selected at any time. Um, so we're going to start and I'm going to switch to a slightly different view here so that you can see the individual names. Um, so we're starting with the choir and we're starting with the Clarabelle flute. So that's a, a nice soft flute. Um, I'm going to bring in the close mics for the choir. The choir tends to be this kind of softer element of the organ and more of the kind of accompaniment of you might use these for in a, in a liturgical setting for accompanying um, when the choir is singing very quietly or when you only have boys singing, for example, something like that. So 
So just to go to dive straight into the perspective. You can hear there. Um, if we go for the Dulciana, this is another eight foot stop and eight foot uh, means kind of when you play middle C, you'll hear middle C. It refers uh, primarily to the length of the pipes. So you everything is in multiples of eight or divisions of eight. So you've got four foot is half the length, so an octave up and so on, and 16 foot double the length, so an octave down. So that's a, a lovely soft stop. Um, let's have a listen to the viol de more. And again, if we go back, let's bring back in the stage mics. So you can hear you've got more of the room in there. If we go for the stage and the ambient. You can hear that the, the voicing really um, does change as you bring in, as you go for the different kind of perspectives. Um, so let's have a listen to this, the four foot the concert flute. And then we've finally got the piccolo. So you can get, basically, the way that you select your what's called your registration or which stops you have out um, is the kind of, this is the essence of the tone colour of the organ and how you kind of make it um, sing in a way. I mean, it really can be like a kind of orchestra of colour. So you can hear there, very different sound. If I deselect the fourth, so I've only got the eight foot and the two stop. And then again, we can alter, we can lose the kind of slightly weightier flute, clarabelle flute at the bottom, and we can go for the viol de more. And you can hear that really changes the sound. We put the dul dulciana back in. These are kind of slightly stringier sounds of, of the eight foot. And then again, we can just have the um, four foot instead of the two. So you can hear there, the four foot is really kind of overpowering these. These kind of slightly stringier, very more, much more gentle stops. It'll become more apparent how you might use these in conjunction with each other as we go through. But let's... Um, Let's move on, first of all. We'll go to the great. Now, this is the, the most powerful of all of the manuals. Um, and I'll go back again here so that you can see the, the variety of stops that you have open here. Um, again, we'll go for, we'll just stick with the stage for now. Um, and then we'll go through the stops. Open diapason. You can hear there, um, that's your kind of standard eight foot sound. Here's the stopped diapason. And again, you, it's, you can hear that it's still an eight foot stop. It's still got the diapason sound, but it's stopped. Um, in other words, the, the pipes are capped off at the top. And it gives you a much more kind of enclosed sound. Um, you've got your reeds, here's a trumpet. And then you've got, um, also there's a four foot trumpet over here, um, clarion. And um, so putting those together, it's a nice sound. And you can use these for color with the, let's keep going through the, through the stops for now actually. Um, so we've got the flauta dolce, Again, it's a flute sound, um, but a slightly different one. We've got the principal, which is like the four foot version, I would always consider that of a kind of open diapason. Um, you've got your um, mixtures and 12th and 15th here. Now these are the kind of crunch elements of the organ. Um, so if I play a chord, you can hear what's going on there. And if we play another one on this, <laughs> it's a different um, harmonic series. And the 15th is, again, it's a kind of two foot based one. So you've got th three different colors there. Now, what do they sound like with the um, eight foot? So here, here we go. Let's have a quick listen in reverse. So that's with. 
that's without, just to give you a, a reference. Um, let's go for the uh, 12th here. So you can hear that's slightly different and the mixture. So it's an interesting kind of collection if you put them all on for maximum crunch. And it's these kind of things that give you the real characteristic um, characteristic crunchy sound of a, of a great organ. Now I'm going to put up a couple of, uh, I'm going to put in the reed and the principal and that sounds like this. So you can hear there, you've got a nice, it uh, sounds great down here. Um, and then we've got, we can also have a slightly softer um, sound within the, if we go for the these selection here. So we're, I'm going for the kind of softer eights. Oh, sorry, turn the <laughs> read off. So you can hear there, you've still got a quite nice sound. And if you put in the um, two foot based, Um, then you've got also you can get that that nice kind of sound there and then obviously we can fill in the four so that gives you a really good idea of, of the different colors that you can achieve um, well, let's put up uh, a little mixture in fact let's get all the mics going why not um, we're starting to get a little bit of voice grabbing here because obviously I've got tons and tons of stuff um, all set up. So I'm just going to artificially raise the maximum voices really high. So the way to, I would say the way to do this, the way to write with this would be, I would always write, if I'm doing something really fast, I'd write with a close mic. But I, it's really, really responsive. If I just, I'm using it for sound, then I would write with the stereos. And as you can see, it's not really mullering the voices there. You're getting a kind of reasonable voice limit, even with all of these stops selected. Then when you're ready to kind of mix and balance it out, then I would start going with the, with my all my different mics, whichever ones I want to do. And I'd either bounce them out separately or I would just freeze the track like you can in Logic, um, anything like that, um, where it, it kind of does an offline bounce. That's that's the best way to do this. Um, maximum flexibility is obviously to have these individually recorded um, so that you're not uh, compromising on the, the number of different tone colours and combinations that you can get. So that is the great. Now let's go in and have a look at the swell. The swell is kind of... Um, midway between the great and the choir, um, it still has some powerful sounds in there, but it also has the kind of crunch that you can get from the great. So let's have a listen to all of the stops. So we start with the contra gamba. As you can hear, that is a 16 foot stop. We've got our swell open diapason. And as you can hear that that is not um, anything like as powerful or strong as the great. Um, so this one, the it's an eight foot um, celestial or celestial. It's kind of spelt all kind of different ways. Um, let's go jump down um, so you can see the full list. Um, this is the Latin for willow, uh, for a branch of a willow tree. Um, so it's a kind of wooden fluty kind of sound. And as you can hear, nice and gentle. Um, we've got a Vox Angelica. My favorite colors using that one. Uh, we've got our four foot flute, and then we've obviously got our mixture. So now here's an interesting um, here's an interesting thing. Consider this then. So here's your swell, and if we go, if we put in all of our mics. So you can hear there, we do have um, a really nice kind of, we do have a really nice kind of crunchy sound. It's not quite as powerful as the great though. 
we'll come back to to this in a minute but it does give you a different color and when you are playing um you often want to move between the manuals to get a kind of um just to get a variation in texture and also a variation in dynamic um, and you might do that because you're doing some kind of repeating pattern something like that and you want the main to be on the grate and then your alternate chords uh, if it was something like that so you would do da, 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 da. so you'd have right hand on the grate left hand on the swell and then you would play um, and you get a really nice kind of change changing texture as the pattern develops so that's um, an overview of the swell let us now finally look at the pedals and we've selected three of the pedal stops here um, and they're really three, uh, you know, there's not a huge amount of variety in a lot of um, pedals on generally on these organs. But this has a nice kind of color selection for you that will match up with the registers that we've selected for the swell and great. So that's the off Clyde. That is your reed. We have the open diapason. And then we have the Borden. And that's the sound. So the open diapason is your really standard. You'd probably leave the Borden in as well. It's your really standard kind of, this is the pedal register. Um, and then you would have the Ophiclide when you really want to make a statement. But um, when you want to play really softly with some of those um, Viol de Moore or Vox Humana type sounds, then you would use the Borden and it just gives you that little bit of resonance at the bottom. Now, how you would usually play, there are um, in many of these old organs, it's mechanical. Some of them that have been renovated, it might um, be electrical, but there is um, what, it, what in history was a mechanical connection between the pedal board and the grate and the pedal board and the swell, which could be selected or disconnected, um, very occasionally between the pedal board and the choir manual. Um, and then between the grate and the swell, um, and sometimes the great in the choir as well. But um, it, the, it, as it becomes more intricate, they tend to, it tends to be more varied across the different organs. Um, the idea being that you can be playing on, for example, on the pedal board and triggering the great and or the swell manuals at the same time physically. So you're, you're playing the same notes on the keyboards effectively. Um, or if you're playing on the grate, on the manual, on the keyboard, um, you can also be playing the sounds of the swell. Now, you may ask, well, how do I do that on this version? And the answer is by using the uh, all manuals and pedals uh, patch. So we can set up, I will start off with, uh, for example, our, uh, our grate, and I'll set up a um, standard kind of sound with a mixture. Um, and we're gonna, so that's our, our great. Um, we're going to then uh, select some nice sounds from the swell. And you can hear you've got, it's not necessarily that it's any louder particularly, it is a little bit louder, but the point is that you've got the extra colors of the swell behind. And as you increase these colors, and as you bring in more of your mixture stops, you are getting more towards what you imagine as the sound of the cathedral organ, that kind of thing. And then obviously when we put our reeds in, then you start to get more of it as well. We'll put the trumpet in from there um, and our four foot reed as well. So you get the idea there. This is the kind of um, one size fits all solution here. And you can simulate your, um, basically with what we're hearing at the moment, let's turn the swell off. But what we're hearing at the moment, if we're playing down the bottom, is the equivalent of the pedal board. You're playing with your feet, um, but you've got the grate to pedal connected so that the pedal board is also playing the um, pipes that you've got selected in your register registration on the grate manual as well. And that's your kind of traditional, what you might imagine that 
you get when you're you know when you're playing with your feet but you've got all that really big organ sound so it's all about the registration it's all about the selection of colors that you use um, and it doesn't all have to be you know really kind of massive let's turn some of this stuff off um, we can go down to you know a simple uh, selection here with a couple of nice colors um, and then it sounds like this So there's tons and tons of fun you can you can have with this um, and just going for the close mics again. Very, very different sound. You'll remember what I said earlier about the organist's job being partly to ensure that what the um, what the listener hears is a balanced sound. And obviously, when we're looking at the close mics up against the box, some of the pipes are nearer the front and some are, some are further at the back. So... The sound that you get, uh, it's just a very different colour with the close mic. It's um, its the interesting thing. There's a lot of balance changes, a lot of colour change you can get from the same registrations um, by just changing the balances of the microphones that you're listening back to. So that's a look at the main instruments of the organ. Um, we also have some great sound design stuff in here which have been made and then fabulously built within the eDNA engine. And there's tons and tons of stuff in here. I'm just going to flick through a few of the stops. When I say stops, obviously, <laughs> I mean patches. You can hear that a lot of these patches, as as uh, listed here, have a mod wheel functionality. In this one, it's the low pass filter. So you get the idea, there's tons of great stuff in here and um, we've really enjoyed putting this together. It's a really beautiful organ, I have to reiterate that. Very, very fine instrument and I've been lucky to play quite a few organs in the UK and this is an absolute standout, it's a re really incredible instrument. Um, in the old style, not one of these new, uh, a lot of the newer instruments are voiced to be very, very kind of brittle and aggressive. And while that sound is great for some things, um, it's just the, the, I think the real beauty of the organ and the variety of sound that you can get from it comes from these classic old instruments. There is just something about this period of organ building uh, history, which, which is very, very special indeed. So I hope you enjoyed watching that and um, we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you very much. Bye bye.